a bunch of things that I've sold in the last 30 days on eBay. This ain't a bunch of that is what I could possibly sell it for, or this is what, you know, these are bolos that I ain't ever even seen in my life, but I'm going to tell you what to sell. This ain't one of those kind of videos. This video is actually stuff that I sold in the last 30 days that if you're looking for vintage stuff to resell, this is the kind of stuff you want to keep an eye out for. My name is Eric. I'm a full-time reseller. I've been a full-time reseller for about 20 years at this point. I specialize in reselling items that are vintage. So vintage antique items, that's my jam. I actually own a vintage brick and mortar store, like physical store. Nobody does that anymore. Everybody wants to sell online. But I own a brick and mortar store in Milwaukee called BC Modern. We specialize in items from the 1950s to the 1970s. I'm also a part-time reseller on eBay. What I'm going to show in this video is some of the stuff that I've sold in the last 30 days on eBay. Again, this stuff is all vintage and I only do auctions on eBay. I don't do buy and nows. I don't do best offers. Everything I stick on there, I started at 99 cents and I sell it to the highest bidder. I'm going to cover 91 items in this video. That's my goal is to get through all 91 items that I sold in the last 30 days. This 91 items will equal up to about almost $7,000 in sales. My goal with this video is that you actually see some things that you probably didn't know that you could resell and you didn't realize that they had value. And now you're like, you know what? I'm going to keep my eye out for this stuff because Eric told me so. If you can get any kind of value out of this video, I just need you to hit a thumbs up. I don't need you to send me a dollar. I don't need you to find me on, on, on uh, eBay. If you're looking for me anyways, I'm on eBay, Vintage Lounge MKE. I'll drop it in the uh, description of the video if you want to look me up. But I don't need you to go to my eBay site and buy anything. If I add value to you in this video, I just need you to hit the thumbs up. And if you really, really like what you see, hit the subscribe button. Now, one of those things that people always say to me, you list things on your eBay site at 99 cents, how much of that stuff actually sells for 99 cents. Now, granted, I'm a gambler. I, I used to be a poker player before I got into this vintage world. So I'm a gambler. I don't mind rolling the dice and trying to see what you know things are going to go for. What I'm trying to do is minimize the amount of items that go for cheap. So I'm making sure that in my head, I'm listing things that have some kind of value, things that I'm pretty sure won't go for 99 cents. We're going to start this list of items that you should look for at the bottom, and then we'll get all the way to the top. So that means my lowest selling item will start first, and then we'll get it all the way to the highest selling item. So we'll start with the 99 cents items for the people who are always like, do you sell anything for 99 cents? Yes, it happens. I try not to let it happen, but it happens. Now, before I get into some of these items that I sold in the last 30 days on eBay, I want to let you know that I primarily get a lot of my items through buying from private estates. So when I when I say buying from private estates, that basically means I'm a competitor to like an estate sale. They're going to go in and they're going to say, we're going to sell things for you and we're going to take a percentage of it. I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, hey, I'm here to buy the things I'm interested in. I can buy everything or I can buy one piece. So a lot of times I'm buying these things in a bulk amount or a bulk deal. That allows me to gamble a lot more freely on the items that I find because my cost of goods or per cost of goods on an item is stretched out over a lot of items. So that's why I'm able to start things at 99 cents and not have to feel that pressure of, I got to make a certain amount for these things. I'm not looking at a per piece uh, sell through ratio. I'm looking at how many items that I sell in this period of time. That's what I'm paying through. That's the sell through ratio that I'm more concerned with is if I list 60 items, did I sell 50 of them? That's what I'm paying attention to. Now, that does not mean that you can't find these things at garage sales, flea markets, rummage sales, uh, thrift stores. And that's why I'm putting this out here is if you can, you know, for anybody that's watching this video, you can find these things out there when you're looking for vintage stuff to resell. I'm just giving you some tips along the way to help you uh, get from zero to 100K, 200K, 300K, whatever your goal is as a reseller. These numbers may or may not seem impressive to some people and that's okay. I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to just share my story along the way. And I hope that it inspires you. I don't got to impress you.
So starting out, 99 cents. Our first item was this vintage, what was it? Golden Rule Marble. If you look on this little sheet of paper, it has the rule, the golden rule, the meaning behind the golden rule marble. Anyways, 99 cents. Four dollars and five cents, it looks like, with shipping and taxes. So 505 was the total. Scrolling on down, our next item that we sold was a vintage belt buckle. And this one was uh, Indiana Metalcraft. So that is a good company to keep your eye out for, Indiana Metalcraft. That's a good company. They made a lot of brass belt buckles in the 70s. This one didn't sell for too much, 99 cents, another 99 cents item um, with shipping and taxes, $5.30. Next, we had uh, Murano uh, vase. This is one of those things I thought would have did a little bit better, but that's the gamble of auctions. You just kind of never know what these things are going to go for. $5.50. Not proud of it, but it's sold. Local pickup. It's gone. It's over with. <clears throat> Next up, we had a, what is this? Oh, Mexico sterling silver necklace. Um, and if you look here, the necklace was sterling, but the charm also was sterling too. So you can see right there, it is marked sterling and it is signed. So I got signed R-I-S. That's what you see right there. And that necklace sold for a dollar and four cents. I know everybody's like, this guy's a joke. He don't sell anything really, not for good money, but just stick around. It gets better. Trust me. What I'm starting out at the bottom here is to show that some things do go for cheap. And a lot of people want to know what items do you sell at 99 cents, if any, when you start them at 99 cents. So we're starting here. Uh, next item up, uh, a watch fob for Caterpillar uh, Tractor Company. And this one was from Peoria, Illinois. And if you look on the back here, you can see right there. So on the back, they'll say where they're from. And then this one is from, like I said, Peoria. 99 cents, $6.83 with the taxes and the shipping. Moving along, we're out of the 99 center. So what do we get here? One, two, three, four, five 99 centers. Next up is a sterling silver matchbox holder. These, uh, the more ornate, they seem to do a little bit better. This one wasn't anything special because it just had just straight lines on it, but it was made by a company called Webster. Uh, let me see if I can get a picture of that. I don't think I got a picture of that anywhere, but oh, there we go. So you see Webster right there, Mark Sterling Silver. You got to put the amount that it weighs. It was only 12 grams. $2.31 is what I got, which is more than I would have got for it if I scrapped it. So made sense to go ahead and stick it on eBay, see what happens. Next up is a vintage Viking. Um, this guy is Teak, little bitty dude with his little bitty helmet on and his stick, stick, shield, rod, spear, whatever you call it. I don't know. He went for a dollar and twenty a dollar one dollar and twenty five cents seven dollars and seventy three cents with shipping. Next up is Dow House Miniature Furniture. You'll hear me talk about this stuff all the time. You cannot sleep on Dow House Miniature Furniture. Obviously, we can't because it's too small, but you got to pay attention to this stuff because some of these are really big home runs. So. This one isn't one of those really big home runs, but it did sell and it sold for $2.25. All right, next up is another belt buckle. This is another one from Illinois, Indiana Metalcraft. And this one was a keep on trucking belt buckle brass. We got $3.26 for that one. Coming up next is a lot of skeleton keys. This was actually something that I just found in the bottom of a box. I was like, you know what? I'm going to throw it out there and see what happens. Because sometimes cast iron or brass skeleton keys, they go for really good money. Obviously, the more pieces you got or the more ornate piece that you have, you'll get more money for them. So keep an eye out for brass and cast iron skeleton keys. You never know. Anyways, this set uh, or this lot sold for two bucks. Uh, next up is a 1969 Ideal Motorific Pontiac Firebird slot car. I love toys. You'll always hear me talk about selling toys. This one probably would have went for a little bit more if the condition was better. The condition wasn't that great, um, but I still got $5.09 for that. Next up is a 
this notepad holder. I actually found this in Minnesota. I did a video not too long ago where I was explaining uh, an estate that we bought out in Minnesota. And I found this and I thought it said Sterling and that's why I grabbed it, but it didn't say Sterling. It just says Denmark right there. And so I did find similar ones on eBay. Figure, stick it out there, see what happens. We got $5.50 for that piece. Next up is a lot of cereal premiums. Cracker Jack toys. They used to have these little bitty, or not Cracker Jack toys. Well, Cracker Jack uh, popcorn used to have these little bitty toys. And, you know, used to get all these toys in like cereal premium, cereals. Used to get all these toys in cereals. Used to get them in your popcorn boxes. So this is a lot of cereal premiums or things that you can get from like gumballs too. Hold on. My phone's trying to pick up something else. Anyways. So this, I actually had a bunch of these in multiple lots. So you'll see me talk about those a little bit later on. But this lot went for $13.27. I'll show you what some of these things look like. They're super small. Like this is the stuff that you get out of the gumball machines back in the day, which we don't have no more gumball machines, I feel. Yeah, we do, but you just don't find cool stuff like that. In it. Okay, next up is this uh, telescoping uh, tripod. I thought this would go for more. Sometimes you can get really good money for tripods. So, you know, pay attention to them, especially if they're German. But this one, I didn't get nothing really for it. 99 cents plus shipping added. Um, 99 cents is what it sold for. You had shipping and taxes in there. We got it up to $14.59. So I probably made more money on the shipping than I did on the item. It's kind of what happened on that one. Anyways, next up is a Knight Rider model from 1983. I'm uh, not sure if this was complete. It doesn't really look complete, but anytime I do get models, I always just show everything in the picture so you can see what's in the lot and if it's going to work for your project. It's kind of what it comes down to. So $8.50 that sold for. Next up is a retired Yadro. And this isn't one of the super uh, intricate ones. It's not even a shiny one. This is a matte finish. Um, this little angel with trumpet. Went for $5.50, $17.53 with shipping on there. Next up is we had a, I bought a whole box of Swatch watches. And so this is part of that lot of Swatch watches. This one was red and green, had the red and green on the dial. Here, I'll show the dial. The dial was super cool, but the band, it was all wool. And I think that's what was the coolest part about this watch. Honestly, if I could get a, I could probably, I would, yeah, I think they make a wool band for Apple watches. I think that might look kind of sharp. What do you guys think about a wool band on an Apple watch? Drop that in the comments. Is that crazy? It's like, like mixing two different time periods, but I think it might be okay. It might be kind of cool. But anyways, the watch sold for $10.50, which is cool because I actually had a whole box of watches. Um, I love buying old watches, especially old men's watches. You'd be surprised what you can get for old men's watches. So that's a bolo. Keep an eye out for old men's watches. Next up is 1960s Barbie sophisticated lady pink gown cape. 19 or excuse me, number 993. So that number 993 refers to the actual number of this outfit. Um, this is just the gown cape for the outfit. So there was other pieces that would have went to this uh, this outfit. I look for Barbie stuff all the time, you know, Obviously, keep an eye out for that tag. You need to see if it's got that Barbie tag on there. That's what you're looking for. So I got 12 bucks for the cape that goes to the outfit of the sophisticated lady. Next up is another lot. Uh, next up is a lot of Dow House miniature stuff. Um, I went through the lot of Dow House stuff and I sold a bunch last month. And this was kind of the leftover lot. And you can see here, it's just a mix of things. These are all wood, nothing very, very well made or intricate. So I'm assuming that that's why it only went for $9.99, which is fine to me. It's better than it ended up in a landfill. We got another Yadro. This one is, um, what do we call her? Girl with hat bonnet sitting on stool. Number 1147. It's numbered, uh, let me see, did we, did he have the number on the bottom? Let's see here. Uh, it does not have the number on the bottom, but it is Mark Yadro on the bottom. Um, no damage. And, you know, 
the thing with Yadros is most of them are going to be retired at this point when you're looking at the, you know, when you're most of them that you're going to want to look for are going to be retired. It doesn't mean they're going to necessarily go for crazy money, but you want to look for a retired Yadro. So $6.50 I got for that Yadro. Next up, we got some more Barbie stuff. This one is actually um, 1960s career girl, black and white suit. Wasn't complete again. You make the most money when you can complete these outfits. This actually had two of the same pieces in there. And I think those are two maybe hats. I don't know what those are. But anyways, I had two of those in there. I got 13 bucks for that lot of Barbie items. Next up was two mid-century modern fiberglass lampshades. These would sit like kind of sideways on a lamp. You can see here where the bulb would fit right in there. And so then you kind of get like this uh like like uh it wouldn't it doesn't well yeah it sits on the top but it's gonna be like a half moon shade almost yeah that's what half moon that's a good we're gonna go with half moon on that one okay nine dollars and ninety nine cents we got for that next up is a lot of um canoe echo is the brand and canoe muffin is the the pattern so when you see uh flatware that has this uh kind of wood uh these wood tips or wood handles just take a look at it and and make sure that it is uh marked on the back here you can see it's going to be marked uh let's open it there there we go it marked echo right there and that's what you're going to be looking for these aren't extremely rare they went for nine dollars and 99 cents now if you can get more of this pattern or if you can get certain pieces of this pattern you can get really good money for that stuff so echo canoe muffin that's what you're looking for i don't know that's a weird name, but <laughs> that's what it's called. <laughs> Next up, we got, um, this is, uh, what do we call it? Old Mexican mask. This is sterling silver, and it could be either a brooch or it could be a pendant around your neck um, for your necklace. Marked Mexico on the back, marked sterling also on the back, and it's got a jade face. Very pretty piece. I think somebody got a Heck of a deal for $15.50. $15 and it actually looks like it went overseas. So when you see stuff going overseas, it's like, you know, they know what they're buying. You know, they know what they're, they're paying attention to the stuff that we sell in America. So, you know, always remember like our culture and the things that we sell over here. Um, people want it. So if you haven't already turned on that international shipping, you'd be surprised at some of this stuff that they're willing to pay for overseas. Next up is a set of binoculars. These are mini binoculars, actually. And they came with this little leather case. Um, they were a number, what is it? Uh, number 7748. So where did I get that number from? Somewhere on a binoculars, probably. There we go. 7748. There's the number right there. And they were made in Occupy Japan. And I got $13.50 for that. Next up is a Viking uh, dish in orange and it's a handled basket very 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 pretty color still had the viking tag on it and we got seven dollars and fifty cents glass a lot of times you just got to be careful with the shipping just make sure that your shipping isn't crazy on 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 glass and i sold a bunch of vikings so this was part of a viking and blinko collection that i listed online some of it went in my store so again this one only sold for seven dollars and fifty cents but i'm looking at an overall picture of what everything goes for when i resell next up was a playmobil um astronaut playmobil lot with the astronaut and the spaceships this you know again because i buy things in such bulk this was just like in a box with some other things so you know a lot of times i like to um i'll dig through a box and i'm digging looking for like items and when i find those like items we put them in a lot and we sell them like that and that's one way that you can get a lot of your money back when you're doing bulk deals is you know literally nickel and diming uh, I should say nickel and diving, but, you know, creating box lots of items, similar items, and then selling them online. So that's what I did on this uh, instance. I got $10.50 for that lot of Playmobil items. Next up is a 1940s, 1950s um, Boy Scout Master hat. This thing was wool. I pulled this out of a house in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Um, the original owner was actually like a Scout Master. He was a high ranking guy with the Red Cross too. So this was actually used in someone's, this was actually used, which is, you know, 
cool in itself actually, but I got $13.50 for that plus shipping. Next up, we got more Barbie stuff actually. Um, another Barbie outfit. This is a busy girl skirt and jacket. That looks like that's complete. And then the Barbie 819, The it's cold outside, brown winter coat with fuck with full fur <laughs> from 1964. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that tag. You got to find that. Got to see that tag. Got to look for that tag. And we'll take a look at the jacket real quick. Not the fur around the collar, though. Jeez, Barbie. Okay. $17 we got for the two of those. Next up is a hanging birdcage made in Japan. This is actually a clock. So this turns. All right. How does it go? I think he turns around there. And then there's a little bitty hand, I think, on. Yeah, you can see it right there a little bit there there that's part of the the hours maybe and then i don't know exactly what part gives you the minutes but eight inches tall made in japan it was not working so that uh obviously affected the value on that piece when you're dealing with clocks working especially mechanical clocks you know you want to make sure that they're working that's going to obviously affect your value that's what anything damn near you know so $15.59 that guy went for next up was a paps beer tray this one i probably should have put it in my store because i could have got way more for it um you know and that's understanding the demand of certain items when you put you know beer items online you're running a chance of competing against a lot of people versus putting it in like i said my store which i'm only dealing with you know the five or six hundred people or so to come to the door every single month so anyways paps beer mirror beer not beer mirror beer tray finest beer served anywhere i got ten dollars and fifty cents for it. okay who remembers the old casio g-shock watches these things still sell digital watches this was in that bag of watches that i got seventeen dollars and 88 cents i got for that one next up was a bunch of the swatch watches these were all like in need of repair one of them wasn't even working um we put them we listed them all 99 cents and they all sold this guy was actually a combined order so let's see here how did that break down how did that break down? So $7.50 on one, 99 cents, $6.50, $2.25 cents he paid for this book. What was this? Mm, oh, mixed drinks. This was all like recipes for drinks. It's pretty cool. $2.25 cents he got it for. So all together, that order was $17.24 plus shipping, bringing us to $26.40 for that entire order. Next up, <laughs> have we made it to twenty dollars yet? We ain't made it to twenty dollars yet. That's okay. All right. Next up is this frosted little wiener dog. Look at this guy. Good quality crystal or good quality glass, and he sold for sixteen dollars and fifty cents. Next up are two Murano pieces. This is interesting. These two Murano pieces. You know, I'm learning a lot about, uh, I stepped away from eBay for a while and, um, you know, I'm stepping back into the platform selling on a part-time basis. And I can tell you right now that I'm not having very good luck with Murano pieces. So I don't know if I would necessarily recommend that as a bolo, unless you have done some really good research on a piece that you're sticking out there because the Murano stuff that I'm selling, I'm just not having good luck. All right. That's just my two cents. These two Murano pieces, $2.24. I could have donated them for that. But anyways, they did sell. Uh, next on the list is this German knife with the deer hoof, hoof um, handle with the little sheath. And we got $20.50 for that. Next up is a lot of fountain pens. Nothing that was really special in this lot. And that's why I decided to put them together. And when I say special, I'm looking for items usually that can stand by themselves. Things that I can resell, you know, starting them at 99 cents and they can sell by themselves. I didn't see that as a potential with this grouping of pins and so that's why i put them all together instead of trying to sell individual you know lot or individual um fountain pins so we got those three fountain pins mainly schaefer is the brand there was one parker pin in that lot we got twenty dollars and fifty cents for that next up is a tiffin 
T-I-F-F-I-N, Tiffin, Art Glass, uh, Vase, Flower Arranger. And this guy is, this is the shiny one. I'll sh the next one will be more of a matte finish. We got $26.76 for that one. And that was a local pickup. So that was pretty cool. I didn't have to pack that one, uh, which I'm not worried about packing, but anytime you don't got to pack glass, it's a good week, right? Next up is another Tiffin vase. This one was in the same kind of reddish orange, but this one is a satin finish. And that one wasn't a local pickup, but I'm okay. We still shipped it and it was $20 and 50 cents is what it sold for. We're shipping, it came out to 31 bucks. Next up is um, this Philippines uh, yeah, bolo, bolo knife. This Philippines bolo knife with the original sheath. And you can see how detailed it is on the blade itself. And this actually came from uh, the family. There's another There's another World War II piece that I'm a, uh, you'll see later on in a video. But um, the, the dad was in World War II. So these are things that he probably borrowed back. Next up is Danbury Mint uh, Twin Towers. And, and you can see here, uh, where is it at here? This guy. Oh, there we go. On the top of the tower, there. This guy was broken, uh, but it's still sold for sixteen dollars and fifty cents now. Danbury Mint, Franklin Mint. Those are like you want to pay attention to those. Do I still call them modern collectibles? But they still have quite a bit of value. Now, had this thing not been damaged, I probably would have got you know seventy five to hundred bucks for it. Uh, no lie. So look them up. Danbury Mint Twin Towers. Uh, you know, obviously anything 9-11 is, you know, still very, very highly collectible. Next up is uh, a poker caddy. And I sold this with, uh, this is exactly how I found it in the house. I sold it just like that. So whoever got it, they get all the chips, they get the cards, and they're ready to play. Game on. I love these things. I love the the functionality of them. They're just so cool. Like the colors too, right? Uh, $10.50 I got for that. Next up is another uh, Yadro. Next up is another Yadro. This guy is, he's got a nice shiny finish to him. No broken pieces. I actually thrifted all of these Yadros. Um, so this one went for $21.50. So you'll, again, you'll see a mix of things in my, the things that I'm selling. And if I remember where I got them from, I'll tell you, I'm not really big on like saying I paid X, Y, Z for something. But if I do remember, I will tell you. But again, because I buy in such bulk, uh, it is hard for me to remember, uh, you know, or kind of break it down. Like even when I go thrifting, I don't look at a per piece by price. I look at how much that I spend that whole day because I'm in the business of buying and selling. It's a perpetual motion continuously. And it's not decided on the success of one find or one sale. That makes sense. Next up is uh, more belt buckles. So we put these all in a lot. This is all NRA belt buckles. There was a lot of five of them. And you can see here, this actually came from the same guy I got the Boy Scout hat from. Brass belt buckles, NRA, $21.50 we got for those. Next up is Vintage Imperial. And this is cool because this is glass. Look at this. Hold on. Let me see here. There we go. You can see that's all glass. And it was dated 1921 with a patent date right there. Imperial is the maker. Uh, $24.25 we got for that one. Next up is I, I sell a lot of hardware. You're going to start to see, you know, over time, you're going to see me selling hardware. I sell hardware, fixtures. I love that kind of stuff. It's architectural. It's so cool. Uh, a lot of doorknobs, <laughs> three doorknobs, that's it, three doorknobs, 27 bucks, three brass doorknobs. Here, I'll show you real quick too, so you can see the detail on them. That's what people want. Next up is a, a, a Blinko vase. This is in purple. It's got crackle glass, still had the label on this one, and we got 26 bucks. Uh, look at this. Little Kittles, <laughs> is that it? <laughs> Cabin, Hong Kong, not complete, not in the best condition, but $33.99, crazy. Next up is some beer trays. Again, this, this is like literally this beer tray, 
this $11.61. I just sold this same beer tray for like 40 bucks in my store because that's what it's worth. And that's the, that's the thing with auctions. You have to realize that, you know, sometimes people don't see these listings when you're running an auction. You only got five to seven days to 10 days to make sure people see these listings. And sometimes people forget that's the gamble. It's a gift and a curse. Trust me. Uh, the Switzerland tray, uh, $11.61. Of course, you gave me positive feedback because you stole the tray. And then the Miller tray went for uh, $16.11. So that's funny. The Miller went for more than a Switzer. 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 I can't even say it. Schlitzerland. Schlitzerland. Say that a couple times fast. All right. Next up is. Uh, Roseville pottery. This stuff used to be so hot in the early 2000s, but it still holds some kind of value. You just got to find the right pieces. So here's a set of candlestick holders. Uh, they sold for $30.75. Cracker Jack gumball uh, plastic charms. We're getting to the lots. Remember I said that earlier on in the video that you're going to see quite a few of those lots. This slot sold for $43. Next up is another piece of Blinko. Uh, this one isn't labeled, but we just knew it was Blinko from the books that we have. And obviously this came from a Blinko collection. So that helped us identify what, you know, <laughs> what kind of piece it was. The story that you get when you buy these pieces always helps you sell them. So pay attention to when people are talking to you. $32 we got for that Blinko. Here's another Yadro. This is another retired Yadro. This one is number 4962 and it sold for $33. Next up is a Fire King Jadeite Green Bread Loaf Pan. No cracks, no chips. Love that beautiful green jadeite color, $32.99. Sold a wood picture frame. This is a nice intricate carved wood picture frame. We got, what do we get for that one? $36 for the picture frame. Yeah, it's crazy. I pulled that off a wall. Next up is a Winchester. So anything gun related, Winchester, Remington, pay attention to that kind of stuff. Those are, you know, big names in uh, the gun world. And there's collectors of things that are made by those companies that doesn't necessarily have to be firearms. So this folding pocket knife sold for 41 bucks. It was like this big used. Imagine what it was brand new. Anyways, Schaefer found pen. This one, um, I like this one because it's got the little dot here. They'll come in different colors. I've had it in green. Last month, I saw one in green. That one did a lot more than this one. But look for that little dot. Those are usually a little bit better found pins. This one sold for $46.77. Next up is another piece of architectural uh, hardware. This was just a East Lake style doorknob with the plate. So you get the door plate and you get the knob all in one. And hopefully, you know, this, this kind of stuff usually sells to somebody that's restoring a house and they have similar knobs and they're looking for more of them. So this sold for 44 bucks plus shipping. Next up is a Blinko, Blinko decanter in the stunning Amberina color. I love the whole yellow, you know, yellow to orange to red fade. That's what they call Amberina. $31.50 we got for that. Uh, a lot of belt buckles. A lot of brass belt buckles. I went through these. I actually pulled a couple out. I sold the, the you know, a couple of them locally. The firefighter ones, I sold those locally because there's a lot of firefighters that follow my personal business. And um, there's a lot of firefighters and firefighter wives that um, shop with me locally. So I figured I'll pull those out and I end up selling all of those locally, which is pretty cool. And then the rest, I put them in a lot. We got $38.80 for those. This was actually part of that lot. I knew it was a little bit better. So I pulled that one out to sell individually. This is a Native American uh, belt buckle. It is signed with, there's an L somewhere on here. Eh, where are we at here? Where is it at? Somewhere there. Somewhere there's a signature on there. Um, this was coral and turquoise inlay. And we got 53 bucks for a belt buckle that was in a box of other ones. Pay attention to belt buckles. I promise you, you're going to hit a home run one of these times because it's just, it's 
They're there. They're out there. The home runs, the belt buckle home runs are out there. Trust me. Next up. Uh, Blinko, we're back to Blinko in Cobalt Blue. This is a huge vase. Still had the label on it. The top of it. Look how smooth that top is. Yeah. Just like oh, the oh, detail. It's like the, 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 the craftsmanship of these old glass pieces and that they've stood the test of time is just awesome. 38 bucks plus shipping we got for that. Next up was a vintage Pyrex Cinderella um, uh, Cinderella Baker. And this was new in the box, new old. You can see everything's there. Actually had two of those and we got 44 bucks for that one. More Pyrex. This was Pyrex Autumn from 1986. This was a mixing bowl set. Doesn't look like it's ever been removed from the package. And if it did, they put it back in there very neatly. And we got $48 and two cents for that one plus shipping. All right, Blinko, 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 more Blinko. This one in the cobalt blue, the top is a bit different and it is a lot smaller than the other one. We got 54 bucks vintage Swiss Hamilton watch. I mentioned it earlier in the video, men's watches, pay attention to them. Definitely worth it taking a second look if you ever get a chance to look at vintage men's watches 61 dollars we got for that one uh schaefer pen this one is in green i sold the black one also this month i mentioned keep an eye out for that little dot at the top this guy we got 67 dollars for that one next up is a set of vintage ray band aviator style sunglasses these weren't in the best shape um, did have little scratches on the lenses, and I think they were pretty stretched out. But we still got 61 bucks for those. Pyrex Old Orchard 3-Piece Bake Serve Store Bowl Set. Number 47-40. Number 470-47. We got 60 bucks for that. Next up is a lot of Barbie dolls with clothes. This was also part of the Barbies that I picked up not too long ago. I should say Barbies, but the Barbie clothes that I picked up. I actually bought or got all of this stuff from a thrift store, went through it and sorted it based on condition and similar items. We put all this in one lot. We got 68 bucks for the two dolls plus the two outfits. This is actually for Ken. This is one of Ken's outfits. Put it all together, 68 bucks. Uh, Blinko again, this is Blinko crackle glass. This was a decanter was not sure if this stopper went with it, but this is exactly how I found it. I didn't get any complaints from the buyer. 63 bucks. We got for that one. Another piece of Blinko in a cobalt blue. This is a little bit taller than that other base that had the kind of flat top on it. Also, uh, we got $63 for that one. Next up is this is the only problem I had during the month. Now I got this order right here. And this was two pieces of glass. You can see one's an Italian apothecary with uh, uh, the top on it. 26 bucks we got for that one. And then the other piece was a piece of Blinko. And this was a Blinko basket. 26 bucks we got for that one. Now, what happened with this order is this person bought this item. And the tracking says that they requested that the item be picked up from the post office. And they went to pick up the item. It shows that they picked up the item. But then they filed a request saying that they didn't get the item. So I'm actually fighting this uh, transaction because they're saying that the post office scanned the order, but they didn't get it from their postal box. So it's kind of weird, super sketchy. I'm hoping that eBay does side with me because obviously I did everything I was supposed to do by tracking it and sending it through their system. I personally feel like this person's running a scam. Um, they got the item on a Friday. No, they got the item on a Wednesday. They didn't report anything to me to Friday. And then it also took another five days for them to report the second piece was not received. So a little sketchy. But anyways, that's the only issue I had all last month. 52 bucks we got for the two of those. Next up is a blue genie bottle in Poli, 19 inches tall, Italian glass. Uh, got the stopper. Can't really tell you a bad thing about it, except 
I guess I can't tell you a bad thing about it. The stopper right here. Somebody put some tape around it to keep it in place because those stoppers kind of move around. $67 we got for that piece. Next up is Marvin Martian, Warner Brothers, 1997. I actually bought this from an estate where uh, the lady called me in to evaluate a hoarder situation. There was too much stuff in the house that just wasn't of interest for me. I ended up buying a ton of t-shirts from her and sweatshirts. I think I paid like two bucks a piece for all the shirts. It was like 200 bucks in shirts. Um and then I end up finding a Marvin and Martian too. So $61 or $71 and 69 cents I got for Marvin. Next up is a Blinko uh, uh, crackle glass in this kind of amberina orange reddish color here again with the cork on the top, 68 bucks for him. I thrifted this uh, blow mold. Uh, a little out of season. I probably should have held on to it for a little bit longer. 36 inch tall, uh, green eyed ghost blow mold Holloway Halloween um, from General Foam. This wasn't Empire, and that makes a big difference. Empire is one of the bigger names in the blow mold industry, and that's the stuff you want to pay attention to. Really, really pay attention to. But this stuff does sell too. Uh, 43 bucks I got for it. Another set of Pyrex. These are brand new in the box, never opened. Look at that. But it's not a crazy pattern. It's not like, you know, it's not one of those super rare patterns. More than anything, um, I think this sold because it was sealed in the box still. $79.40. Oh, look at this. This is all one, two, three, three lots of uh, Cracker Jack toys. $98.80. I'm going to show you some of these so you can kind of see. But I just put them all in one lot. Uh, I mean, I you know there are some that are that have a lot more value, and you can go through and dig through and find them, you know, or you can you can actually piece them out too. You if you wanted to take the time and put each one in your store inventory at five bucks or you know seven bucks or something to that effect. And for myself, I just don't have. Uh, I have the space, so I won't say that, but I don't have the interest in creating an online store inventory. I have a brick and mortar vintage store. That's my, that's my store inventory. I got two floors, 5,000 square feet. You know, we get six to 700 people through our door in two days of a month. Cause that's the only time we're open we're over two days a month. So that's where I focus my store inventory energy on the stuff that I stick on eBay. This is just strictly auction format stuff. Uh, I want it to go. If I list it on eBay, I'm listing with the intentions of it being sold in seven days, not listing with the intentions of saying like, oh, it took six months or it took a year to sell. I ain't got time for that. I, 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 turn and burn. That's what I'm, turn and burn. Anyways, back to our list. Next up is a set of, this is a bunch of pool balls, okay? Pool balls and they were made in Belgium. Here's the brand name right there for you on side of the on the side of the box. Seventy six dollars I got for those. This was a, a piece that I've actually had this for a while, and I was trying to figure out who the maker was, so I put it to the side. And in the vintage and you know antique world, sometimes you don't you don't find the makers or you don't find similar items right away in the vintage and antique world. Sometimes you can know who the maker is like this had the name on the bottom, but I just wasn't finding anything similar to it. So I put it to the side until I can to basically comps started to appear. And when I found some comps, then it was time to list it. And that's what I did. I listed that. These were wall spice pocket shakers. That's what I called them. We got 94 bucks. $94.78 I got for those. Another piece of ornate hardware. This one was a bigger door handle, uh, door knob, and the plate. Uh, pull this right off a wall. Sometimes when you go into homes, people use these for decoration in their homes. <laughs> I don't know if somebody's going to buy it and use it for decoration in their home. That's not my concern. What they do with it after they get it from me is completely up to them. I know that... It's a good collectible item to grab, and I sold it for $106.10. Blinko, more Blinko. This one was really cool. This was probably my favorite piece of Blinko that I sold. Uh, this we one. got $129.05 for that one. 
Next up is a spice cabinet. And I love this spice cabinet because it was a lot bigger than most spice cabinets are. I did take this right off the wall when I was in a home. Uh, it, it, it did have damage. I noticed that, where's the one picture here? So if you look, oh, there we go. If you look at the top here, where are we at here? There we go, see right there, it's broken. Something got broken right there. One of the pieces got broken off. Still, we got $119.50 for that one. More Pyrex. This is uh, some mushrooms. And number 300-61. New in the box. $152.50 we got for those. More Blinko. Two vases. Uh, this one is more of a greenish blue. 51 bucks for that one. Take a look at it. Still have the label on it. And then come on back here. Where you at? Yeah. Where you at? Okay, there we go. Blue is purple with the gold trim uh, around the top. $53. So you can buy those two together. That gives us a grand total of 104 bucks for that Blinko order. Next up is a Pyrex dish. This one is a little bit more rare and unusual. Um, it wasn't, uh, I don't think this was ever used. So I sold this uh, antique clock. It's by Ingram. It's a store regulator clock. That's one of the names that they called it. But that clock actually came from the same place that I got the doorknobs uh, the door plates and the spice cabinet from. So you'll start to see, you know, from week to week when I list things, when I list things that are like items. So like a lot of antique type stuff or a lot of mid-century, the Blinko, I like to list like items in the same week, because if you have those kind of collectors there, you got them in one place, you want to try to flood them with some other stuff. So I listed a bunch of kind of antique type stuff around the same time and from the same house so that anybody that's into one of those items that I listed, they would also potentially see something else in that uh, week of listings that they might be interested in. Anyways, we sold the clock for $153.50. Next up is this antique French blue opal line jewelry box. I think that the value for something like this came in actually having the key to. It was in really good condition. Um, I think it only had one little bitty like nick or chip on it. And uh, we got 460 bucks for that piece. Next up is this antique fancy Art Nouveau slag glass lamp that I rescued uh, about two years ago, but just been kind of sitting on it, not sitting on it literally, but just sitting on it, waiting for the right time to sell. Finally decided to sell it. Uh, this thing is just beautiful. I mean, just gorgeous. This was actually getting ready to get thrown away. I got a buddy that worked for the city of Milwaukee and they were doing a demo for a house. And he calls me, he's like, hey, I got something over here. I think you need to come take a look at it. So I went over there, I bought it from him. And uh, and uh, I've, I've had it for a while. We had it in our store on display for a little bit, a little bit different than what we normally have in the store. So we pulled it off the shelf, put it in the back uh, storage area until... Two weeks ago when I decided to sell it. So we got $660 for that lamp. Crazy. But it was a pain in the butt to ship. Well, pack, not ship, because I ain't shipping. I just packed it. Our last item uh and highest selling item for the month of March was this World War II uh katana. Katana sword. And look at the detail on this thing. Let me just click on one of it. Like, like, it's just crazy. World War II. When I grabbed it, I actually was concerned that something was off with the bottom piece here because, sorry about that, because I felt like this didn't match the quality of this up here. And at the end of the day, I don't know if that piece has been replaced. I just tried to show as many pictures as possible because like even here, oh, hold on. That hole just doesn't feel right. It feels like it should have been down here, but that's not for me to decide. I did it. I did my due diligence on everything else and everything else on this thing looked legit, looked a part of what a World War II um, Japanese katana sword should look like. And I got $763 for that piece. That was 91 items that I was able to sell for a grand total of... $6,746. So a little bit under $7,000.
And you could maybe get a little bit more of some of these things, especially the ones that went for less than $10 if you actually stuck them in a store inventory and did maybe a buy it now or best offer type option. My goal here is not to tell you how to resell or you know uh, how to run your business. I'm just trying to show you some things that you can actually resell for a decent amount of money that are old and vintage that you may or may not know that have value. And these are also things that you should definitely be keeping an eye out for. 91 items that you could sell on eBay, potentially get a little bit more for some of this stuff, uh, less than, you know, a little bit less than $7,000 that you can make off of these items. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.